Good morning and welcome to Wellspring. My name is Jim Moore and I'm part of your Sunday, January 28th, 2024 service team. Now we have a few announcements. First, early birds meet Sunday mornings at 9.30 via Zoom. The link is in the weekly email and on the website. Upcoming speakers, next week we will have Randy Granger. On the 11th, Dr. Edward will be our speaker and we'll have our annual meeting um, and a luncheon after service. Reverend Sandy will be here on the 18th and Reverend Kamatara will be, will be back on the 25th. We haven't seen her for a couple of months. <clears throat> Our Thursday evening group meets every week at 7 p.m. We are watching a variety of videos, sure to bring up questions and discussion. Again, Wellspring's annual meeting is the 11th and a salad luncheon will be served, followed by the meeting. <clears throat> the agenda for the uh, meeting is the treasurer's report and kind of an update on Wellsprings financial finances and financial health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Followed by property updates, um, talking about how our outreach is, our tithing, um, board candidates in voting. Um, I think we're open to the possibility of adding someone new to the board if anyone is interested. And lastly, there'll be questions and answers. <clears throat> if you're interested in being on the board, you can talk to any board member to see how much fun we have. Okay, we meet every second Wednesday of the month, unless we don't. Sometimes we change it just for everyone's benefit. Okie dokie. On Monday, February 12th at 7 p.m., we're going to have a sonic massage with Gong's workshop. Would you like to come up here and talk about that for a few minutes, a couple minutes? Yeah, you need to be on the mic. Good morning on this wonderful, wonderful morning. Oh, in my next life, I'm going to be taller. <laughs> Good morning to everybody here and in Zoomland. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jean Geringer. I teach the uh, dowsing, the energy type of classes here. Um, the third week of every month. And from that venue, I am very, very happy to host in a friend of mine who's coming through our town. She's from Georgia, but she is coming through our town in February. Her name is Faye Henry, and I'll show this, and I'm sure you're going to be putting it out um, uh, electronically. She does wonderful performances with Tibetan gongs. So the stage will be lined up with these gongs and she will be playing them for an hour. I have been privileged to, I don't know how many of her gong shows, <laughs> we call them, <laughs> I have gone to over the years uh, where she has played at many dowsing conferences and healing conferences. I have no idea how many, but she and I have been friends for 25, 30 years, so that's a lot. She does a fantastic show. It's quiet. She's not speaking. She's playing, and we have arranged it. We, meaning Edward and I, have arranged it so that it will be here in the sanctuary. We're going to be doing seating for those who wish to seat and make room for those who wish to lie down on a yoga mat or bring in a reclining chair. At first, her announcement came to me that we could change. It said, you know, it would be all, just bring your yoga mats, it'll be all line. And I texted her back, I said, 
some of these folks can get down but can't get back up. We, we, we need to change that. We need to have an option here. It is a wonderful, wonderful experience. Every time I hear, I just go into another place and that music, it just resonates my soul. And while I'm here, it wasn't planned, but I do teach the third um, Saturday of every month. The next class in dowsing will be on map dowsing, which is using a map with a pendulum to find things. We did this last time, we're gonna continue. It can be finding water, finding a new place to live, finding a location out in the desert to do meditation, to find things. And we're gonna wrap up that session with a discussion of ley lines, which are the invisible energy lines around the earth that dowsers dows where they are and where they go to. And not surprisingly, most of the sacred sites of the world are over ley lines or crossings of ley lines. So it'll be a very interesting talk. Thank you for the board and Edward. They didn't know I was gonna make the second announcement, but they're so gracious, I'm sure they don't mind. Mm -hmm. And back to you. Please join us for the gongs. It is, you will love it. You will love it. Okay, the last of our announcements. Our prayer team remains ready to serve and support you. You may submit a prayer request via our webpage or give it to Edward. Our prayer team meets virtually on Tuesday afternoons at 4.15 p.m p.m. to pray with you. You may consider sitting in your quiet space during that time. We know we are one in spirit and the energy of prayers. Prayer knows no limit. invocation. As we gather this morning, we know that spirit is in this place, that there is nowhere that spirit is not. We only need to be open to this truth to enrich our lives hour by hour and day by day. I am so grateful to be part of this Wellspring Sunday celebration and grateful that each of you are here as well some in person, some on Zoom, and some just in spirit. As we slowly breathe in and out, we realize and acknowledge our oneness, both with each other and with spirit. I know and affirm that Donna's message will resonate with each of us and that we will gain both wisdom and insight from her words and her presence with us here today. May the love and positive vibes that we receive here today flow out into our community, growing and expanding to bless our entire world. Again, I am so grateful to be part of this beacon of light we know as Wellspring, and so it is. Please stand if you are able for our song of joy.
and read with me our mission, our vision, and our affirmation. Our vision, to elevate spiritual consciousness in our world. Our mission, to support individual spiritual quests through celebration, study, counsel, loving fellowship, and service. Our affirmation, I welcome the new year and the new beginning it represents. I welcome the freshening spirit into my soul, bringing with it new wisdom throughout the year. I know that this is an opportunity to shine my light brightly to all whom I encounter, and so it is. Some special music now from Barry. Cool. So just to let people know, this is called Call of the Metal Lark. So you hear nature all through it. <clears throat> Thank you, Barry. That was very good. My reading this morning comes from one of my favorite books, 365 Science of Mind. <clears throat> and I've chosen February 13th, or January 13th, excuse me, as what I'm reading today. I know the active power of God one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, is a phrase that comes from Ephesians 4, 6. The key thought for our meditation today is the idea that there is an active presence 
of the creative spirit in all our affairs, not something passive, but something that is moving in and through everything we do. We should affirm that this divine presence is everywhere, that it is always active in, around, and through us. Believing that the spirit is at the center of everything and at the very center of my own physical being, I recognize this presence harmoniously acting in every cell, every organ, and every function of my physical body. I praise my body temple, bless it, and know that every activity within it is in harmony with divine life. One mind governs everything, and I now affirm and accept that this same intelligence governs my affairs. It is within me and around me at all times, directing, guiding, governing, controlling, and leading me happily to the fulfillment to the fulfillment of all good purposes. I salute the God presence in everyone I meet, and I know that as surely as I do this, the love dwelling in them responds to the same presence that is within me. We act in a unison of peace and understanding, recognizing all of nature is the handiwork of God I see the beauty of his activity in everything, in the wind and the wave, in the sunshine and the cloud, and in everything that God has created. And so it is. And now it's time to bring up Donna Stryker. Am I on? I am on. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Oh, got it. Good morning to everybody and to everybody in Zoom land too. I think I saw my sister's name appear on the screen. Did she come? Oh, good. Hi, mom. Hi, sis. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. So I've got two readings for you this morning. The first one is from Joel Goldsmith and uh, it's called The Only Freedom. No separation from God. Never forget the word is. Be aware of it on every occasion. Every minute of every day. You are not to seek God. You are not to search for God. You are not to run after God. You are not to attempt to contact God. You are to remember that God already is and contact is already intact. All that you are expecting of God already is. All that you're desiring of God, God already is. Infinite way writings may use such terminology as you must contact God, or you must make a contract with God, or you must seek God, or you must search God. That is the language used for beginners so that they may lead to the realization of the need for God in their immediate experience. As students advance in understanding, however, they must eventually come to a place where they know that God already is closer than breathing and nearer than hands and feet, so they do not have to go after God or search for God. You who are students must know sometimes that the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Not tomorrow, not after you have read some books, not after you've been given treatments, not after you go through classes. No, the purpose of class is to reveal to you that God is closer than breathing this minute, that the place whereon thou standest is already holy ground. God is already there. That God is already the life of your being, the soul of your being, the substance of your being. Everything in the spiritual universe revolves around the word is. And in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In that, there is no reaching out to God, no demanding anything. It is an assurance that the Lord is close at hand. 
The Lord knows my needs before I ask. Therefore, I shall not want. Is, is the sacred word of all time. God is within me. God knows my needs before I do. God is forever functioning as the harmony of my being and as the eternality of my life, as the infinity of my supply and as the divinity of my being. God is already harmony, infinity, eternity, and infinity. Joel Smith uses a lot of traditional Bible verses, etc. And he uses he. I'm going to use he and she interchangeable when I speak about spirit and God, mother, father, God. I don't think it really matters, but I just wanted to say that. The other reading is very short. It's from this thing called you by Ernest Holmes. The original author of all life is in and around you. Not a God who was, but a God who is. This is the greatest secret which you share with life. Life is wherever you are. It revolves around you even as it flows through you. Keep the doorway of your mind open. Feeling, thinking, communing with this life. Know that it fills you with light and with power. You're all getting a present today. I have an exercise for you. And it won't hurt. It won't cost you anything. You don't need any special equipment. You don't even need a yoga mat, although I do have one. It was a gift that was given to me several years ago at a seminar, a business seminar. So I want you to repeat after me. You don't even have to stand up, but I seriously want you to repeat after me. And those in Zoomland, I expect the same thing. I am talented. I am, talented. I am, special. I am special. I am unique. I am, unique. I am, beautiful. I am beautiful. I am fabulous. I am, I am terrific. I am great. I am, I want you to come up with something about yourself. I am love. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. My gift to you today. I was given a gift in 2004 by my boss, very traditional Christian, very, um, static in her practice. In fact, she would always tell me, because we would do prayer work at, at work sometimes, and she would explain to me that God wasn't working quickly enough, and so she needed to help him sometimes, and she truly believed that. <laughs> but that's okay. Every, hey, everybody has their own thing. But my boss also knew that I was extremely spiritual versus religious, and she sent me to this leadership seminar, probably because she thought I needed it, because I'm a kind of bossy person. I thought it was going to be business as usual, you know. It was full of spiritual statements. And it showed me, and this was in 2004. That was a long time ago. That businesses in 2004 were fully aware of the now. The power of each person as an expression of spirit. There were 17 presenters. And over half of them made references to our purpose our gifts, our path, or terms that we hear at New Thought Churches all of the time. Terms like staying in the present, humility, dignity, integrity, honor, service to others, truth. One speaker stated that we all make a difference. Every single person makes a difference. And it's up to us to figure out what that purpose is. Another speaker stated, you cannot change another person, no matter how much we'd like to. You can only change yourself. What change would you like to see was the question that that particular speaker put out to the audience. Yet another speaker spoke to our invitation to greatness, not based on money or power or title, but on the love of who we are in the world. Another speaker spoke to demonstrating our greatness by bringing up the wonder of others. I thought that was a cool one. Several of the speakers spoke to respect, honoring one another. One even quoted C.S. Lewis, who said that people don't need to be taught. They need to be reminded. They need to be reminded of who they are. It was an affirmation that spirit is in through and around business also, not
Thank you. See, it's all perfect. <laughs> oh, that just gave me a few minutes to oh, chill, take a deep breath. So today, I would like to remind you of the present and the difference you make in the world. Everyone loves presents, right? We love to get presents. I love to get get give presents, but most of us don't live in the present. I was talking to Barry earlier, and this is so serendipitous, because he asked me what the name of my talk was. And I told him, and he said, oh, did you ever see Kung Fu Panda? Because <laughs> this is in there. But I also got it from a business book called The Present, and it was also in there. Yesterday is history. Today, tomorrow is mystery. Today is a gift, and that's why we call it the present. You've heard the sayings, being in the present, living in the present, although I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a hard time doing that. Eckhart Tolle in The Power of Now says that when you are present, when your attention is fully and intensely in the now, being, spirit can be felt, but it can never be understood mentally. Well, if I can't understand it, then how am I gonna become it? Just saying, but well, we're gonna get there. I think that some of us believe that if we become or are fully present in the moment, that we will become enlightened in some way for more than the moment occasionally when we glimpse the greatness within, that natural state of oneness with God. Eckhart Tolle also said, all you really need to do is accept this moment fully. You are then at ease in the here and the now and at ease with yourself. I think so. So that's why I can't be more at ease in the here and the now in the good times and then in the bad times and I can't see the moment fully why can't I accept a moment fully when someone is not nice to me? Why can't I accept a moment fully when things aren't going my way, when things are going my way, when I'm angry or judgmental? I'm going to come back to that. So since the last time I talked, which is what I do every time, I go within and I ask spirit for guidance. What am I going to talk about? What's the message going to be? Now, God has never let me down, just saying, I'm open, I'm willing, just let me know. Days passed, several weeks passed. <clears throat> okay, I'm open, I'm willing, really, seriously. So the date became, became closer and I needed to give a title to Edward, which I did yesterday morning, by the way. I was just a wee, 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 wee bit agitated with spirit because I wasn't getting an answer. In the early hours one morning this last week, the week before I was supposed to talk, I get the word present. What present? Present, I don't know, what do you mean? I don't wanna talk about the present. I wanted to talk about your greatness and your beauty and your wonder and how you make a difference in the world. What was I not getting again, Donna? I was not getting that your presence in the world and your present and your greatness are divinely connected. They're the same thing. It doesn't have to be two different talks. You are a gift 
to the universe. You are a present and you make a difference. I also wasn't getting that I was not in control again. <sighs> spirit must be off, we must be awfully special because we are connected to spirit, to God. And then it should be easy to stay in the presence with spirit. They should go hand in hand, right? But now I'm not talking about you guys. I'm only talking about myself. I'm not projecting. But how many of me's, us, find our minds are not here in the present many times. We're thinking about what happened on Friday. We're thinking about what we're having for lunch. We're thinking what's going to happen after church. We're thinking about the 15 projects we have. How many times a week? And this is a, this is a homework assignment for you. Can you try to be present one minute at a time? And as soon as your mind, and I'm not talking about sitting down and meditating. I don't listen to the radio in the car. And because, because I can't be distracted by all the other things like radios and the phone and everything. So when I'm driving, I'm present. Have you ever tried driving and being present? It's really hard, <laughs> it's, especially in Las Cruces. That's the kind of present I'm talking about. I think one of the possible reasons that we don't actually believe we're worthy of being in the moment in the presence of greatness, God, spirit, being. And that takes me back to what I wanted to share with you today, a gift, a present, the present of yourself. We are special. We are divine. We are a present to ourself, our families, our friends, strangers, employers, employees. I don't work anymore, but I know some people still do. So I had to throw that in there. We are a gift to the world. Each and every one of you is a gift to the world. But we don't believe it. Not really. Not in our gut of guts, heart of hearts, 100% of the time. Why? Other than we're spiritual beings having a human experience, which I do understand. Old thought patterns, that less than belief, it's a real issue for me. I have less than beliefs that I still work with at 68 years old. The thought that we might actually have a connection to God is kind of pretty scary in a way. Because if we are connected to the divine, that means we need to take responsibility pretty seriously. We can't look to another to remove the truth the truth of who we are. God is all there is. I am one with God. I accept and embody my good. My gosh, what a heck of a few statements. Those three statements are the foundation of the five steps of treatment in religious science because they state the truth. There is only one God. I, we, are one with God. We are never separate. We are worthy. We are special. We are important, brilliant, powerful, wonderful, magnificent, superb, amazing, astonishing, fantastic, great. Do you know how many words there are to explain how amazing we are? Now, many of you really, 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 truly in your deeper secret places in your soul, believe all those words, those thoughts of greatness about yourself, right? Okay, maybe all the time, sometimes, occasionally. If we're fully present, as often as our humanness will allow us to be, that connection grows and becomes our truth. Do you remember a few months ago I said it's simple but not easy? It is. It's the same thing. It takes practice. It takes practice to welcome our spirituality in. It takes practice to remember the truth of our being. And that practice is whatever your practice is in a quiet, 
home, on your yoga mat, in prayer, meditation. I talk to God in the car all the time, and I'm not talking about the other drivers, okay? Not doing that, although there's plenty of opportunity. I do talk out loud, because I don't really care what everybody thinks when I'm driving, because I'm there in the present moment. That's how I practice being close to spirit. Whatever way you do it is perfect. Whatever way you do it is absolutely purpose. Perfect. <clears throat> we also came, all, many of us, I came from a traditional Baptist foundation. A lot of guilt, a lot of wrongs and rights. And in a traditional faith, if we believe we are one with God, it's kind of sacrilegious. It's like, oh no, no, you can't be one with God. There has to be someone in between you. And in other faiths, there actually, faiths, there actually is someone in between you, a priest or a minister or whatever. But think about the power of the truth. We and the divine are one. Oh, come on, Donna, you really don't understand. I did awful things. I'm a terrible person. My childhood really screwed me up. My ex-husband, lover, friend, brother, whatever, they really messed me up. Fill in the blank. They did a number on me. This doesn't apply to me. I can't be one with God. <clears throat> Guess what? Revelation. God is an equal opportunity gift giver. No prejudice. Doesn't care. Her present to you is your present to her. So you kind of owe her, you know, you kind of need to help her out with this. Your present on the planet, your birth, your life, your here and your now are because you are loved by the divine, by the God, by the mother, by the father, by God, spirit, being. Is that not the coolest thing ever in your whole, I mean, it's just like, oh my God, my head almost wants to explode because it is so cool. You are divinely, each and every one of you divinely connected to spirit and you express that in your own special, unique, amazing way. How cool is that? I don't know. I think it's really cool. Just saying. I think our problem is I guess we just don't seem to think that God really knows what he or she is doing, right? No, you think God's all powerful, all knowing, but just not about you, right? He picks and chooses, she picks and chooses. Oh, hell no. I can say that, right? Hell no. <laughs> just, just kidding, because I don't believe in hell. <laughs> See, if you don't believe in hell, it's not a swear word, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> think again. Ernest Holmes said, the truth which can set you free from fear, want, and unhappiness. And John 8, 32, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Long before Martin Luther King said anything like this, John 8, 32, and Ernest Holmes in the 40s. Pretty cool. And it's true. The truth can set you free. What is our truth? We're one with God. We're divinely connected. We are perfect, whole, perfect, and complete in every way. So your mission today, should you choose to accept it as the truth, and our truth is as simple as it sounds, our gift to God is to accept his gift or her gift to us, the present, ourselves, our truth. My gift to take each day each moment, each person, each thought, each realization, each lesson, each opportunity, as best as I humanly can, because I am a human being, is to remember how special I am in the present. So in this present moment, I want you to think about you, the difference you make in the world, that you are a gift to the world, you make all the difference. You do, you know. You are a present. I am a present. We are a present. Go make a difference in the world. Namaste.
So if you'd like to join me in some affirmative prayer. Mother, Father, God, I affirm that every person in this room is expressing their truth and their present in their unique way on a daily basis. And that every one of us can remember the truth of our being, the truth of our oneness, the truth of who we are. I affirm the truth for myself, and I hope that everyone in here affirms the truth from their, for their selves. We live in a glorious, perfect place. The external is not the truth. The internal is the truth. And I bring that truth into my life, my day, my work, my relationships. And I encourage each and every person to affirm that with them and with their loved ones and strangers and anyone they come in contact to with. Our job is to express the light of the world, express spirit, express the Mother, Father, God, so that everyone in the world sees us for who we really are, the truth of who we are, our beingness. And I am so grateful for this time. I am so grateful for spirit within me and the opportunity to remember the truth of who I am, to remember the truth of who you are as you go into your world, you go into your day, and you go about your way. I give great good thanks, Spirit, thank you. And I let it go. The truth will set us free, and so it is. So this song is called Desert Shadow, and I was thinking during Donna's talk, thank you Donna, that um, when I'm in nature is when I really am in the present, because I'm surrounded by the present, everything that's happening is very present, and I forget what's happening in the past. There's evidence of it around me, but it becomes unimportant when you watch nature alive around you. So this is called Desert Shadow, which I think is appropriate for here.
Thank you, Barry. Okay. Um, our fourth quarter tithe, we decided to give the entire amount. It was $1,055, and we gave it to El Caldito Soup Kitchen. They serve about 3,000 people a week, which is a lot of meals. I got the number right, don't I? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now it's time for our offering. And if someone would want to pass the basket around, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Judy. As we acknowledge and receive our virtual and in-person gifts, we give great thanks for the offerings already given and those we will be receiving because we know that giving and receiving are both part of the one flow. We affirm that we are also part of that flow. We bless these gifts and know they are multiplied throughout our community. There are a number of folks we, who have contributed to the production of this service, and we are grateful for this service. We thank you for joining us today in Zoom land and here in the sanctuary. And lastly, stay around in the Zoom meeting after service to visit or join us in the social hall. Please stand if you are able and read with me the benediction followed by our congregational song. Spirit in the midst of us is mighty. Joy, peace, and eternal life are our true nature and flow through us into the world, and so it is.